Hello, I'm Storm Geo Meteorologist Chris A. Bear with a look back at the 2021 hurricane season. It was a quite busy season, not as busy as 2020, but we did have 21 named storms. Seven of those became hurricanes, four of those intense category three, four, and five hurricanes. Now, the forecast that we had at the beginning of the season was for 19 named storms, nine hurricanes, and five intense, intense hurricanes. So, not quite as active as we were forecasting, but fortunately, most of the stronger storms stayed offshore with the exception of Ida, of course. And there's a look at our forecast from back in May, the potential tract I've identified where all the hurricanes made landfall. First hurricane of the season, Elsa, struck the Eastern Caribbean. Not a very strong system, but it did strike the Eastern Caribbean islands. Of course, we had Ida strike Western Cuba and then move over here to Louisiana. Uh, Grace became a major hurricane, the first major hurricane of the season, struck over here in southern parts of Mexico. And Larry, long lived storm uh, across the open Atlantic ended up striking Newfoundland as a hurricane. So those are all the tracks and those are all the hurricane landfalls last year. Only two of them in the United States and uh, three in the Caribbean Sea, one in Mexico over here in southern Mexico. Of course, it's Mexico and the northern Yucatan Peninsula as well. Now we had a number of very short-lived storms. We, we, the name for that uh, has been coined as shorties, a storm that lasts less than 48 hours, generally relatively weak. And we did have 10 of the 21 named storms lasting less than 48 hours. Not, uh, not very strong systems as well. We've had an increase in these shorties over the past uh, decades. And I think much of the reason, and the Hurricane Center has confirmed this, is that we have much better detection out there over the open ocean. Many of these short-lived storms were detected far out to sea, away from reconnaissance, and we can detect these short-lived storms better than we could in the past. So we're seeing a lot more of them uh, in the past couple of decades. Last year, we had a couple of major hurricanes that lasted a long period of time that generated a lot of accumulated cyclone energy. And ACE, or accumulated cyclone energy, is a measure of a storm's intensity and its duration. A long-lived, strong hurricane is going to generate a lot more points than a short-lived storm. As you can look at the graphic here and see that Larry, long-lived out over the open Atlantic, and Sam, same thing, uh, lasted a long time and produced a lot of ace points out there. 53.8 ace points for Sam. And if we look at the rest of the storms here, not a lot of uh, ace points generated by most of the rest of the storms, which are short-lived or relatively weak. Now, Ida was one of the strongest hurricanes of the season, but it lasted a very short period of time, only, la only generated 10.8 ace points. Season started out early in the latter parts of May as subtropical storm Anna formed out here northeast of Bermuda, uh, tracked off to the northeast and briefly became a tropical storm the next day and then dissipated, so another short-lived storm. We had the first storm making landfall of the season, that was Claudette. In middle June, it moved into the Texas coast as a just became a tropical storm in here at landfall and then was renamed a tropical storm as it approached the coast of Virginia a few days later. Not a much uh, in the way of damage, just some rainfall from Claudette as they moved on through. Elsa, the first hurricane of the season, moved through the Caribbean Sea, weakened to a tropical storm, and briefly became a hurricane west of uh, the Florida Peninsula before moving inland into northern Florida. Now, first track for Elsa, and this was an internal track that we generated, uh, it, it generally was a pretty good forecast here, taking it over the western Cuba and then into northern Florida here, very similar to our first forecast on the uh, on the 6th forecast on the 1st of July as uh, Elsa was moving toward the Eastern Caribbean Sea. So uh, Elsa was a well-behaved storm, very well forecast. As it passed west of Florida, this is the sustained winds observed offshore. And there might have been a small area of hurricane force winds here to the west of South Florida, but for the most part, tropical storm conditions, these are the maximum sustained one minute winds here. So tropical storm force winds just brushed over here into the Tampa area. And if we look at the wind gusts, uh, wind gusts near hurricane force just to the east side of Tampa, but most of the hurricane force wind gusts stayed offshore as well. So mostly a tropical storm impact across Florida. Tropical storm Fred followed almost in the path of Elsa. It moved across Cuba and then into northern Florida around the 17th, 16th, 17th of August, 65 mile per hour winds, not much wind damage, and mostly a rain event across Florida and Alabama and Georgia as well. Now, Grace was the first major hurricane of the season. It moved across uh, the Yucatan Peninsula as a hurricane, weakened to a tropical storm, then became a major hurricane briefly before moving inland into southern Mexico. Very straight track on Grace. And that's typical of August storms with strong high pressure to the north, keeping it from recurving into the Gulf of Mexico. 
The first East Coast impact of significance was Hurricane Henri, uh, August 15th to the 23rd. It was a hurricane right in here, but it weakened to a tropical storm before it moved toward the coast of uh, Rhode Island there, mainly against a rainfall event as well for southern parts of New England. A little bit of wind damage, mostly a rain event. Ida was the strong storm of last year. Ida moved into southeast Louisiana with 150 mile per hour winds. That's the track here right across western Cuba. Made landfall almost, uh, well actually to the day from when Hurricane Katrina made landfall back in 2005, August 29th. Now first forecast for Ida was issued the day before it became a tropical depression. Pretty good forecast taking it inland near the mid-Louisiana coast. Uh, by the next day, the Hurricane Center initiated advisories on Ida, and both uh, pretty much agreement that Ida was going to move inland around Vermilion Bay, and it really was a very good forecast for Ida. Uh, the forecast didn't change much over the next several days, just a little bit to the east adjustment on the track forecast. Our ensemble-based model guidance track uh, was very good uh, forecasting Ida as well, putting it inland just on the eastern side of Vermilion Bay. That's the forecast from when it was a tropical storm here west of Jamaica, and that's the actual track here. So a pretty good forecast from the ensemble-based guidance as well. As far as max sustained winds observed from Ida, the reddish colored here, that's hurricane force sustained winds. Maybe some hurricane force sustained winds, a small patch over here toward southern Lake Pontchartrain and Lake Bourne, close to hurricane force Lake Maurepas, uh, probably about 65, 70 mile per hour sustained winds there. But for the most part, the hurricane force sustained winds stayed south of New Orleans and generally was confined to the very coastal areas here south of New Orleans. As far as wind gusts though, that's another factor. Uh, wind gusts are winds that last less than a minute and maybe only a few seconds. Hurricane force winds all the way up through southeast Louisiana into the Mississippi coast. Winds gusts of over 100 miles per hour across New Orleans area and all throughout southeast Louisiana caused considerable damage to the electric grid and to many homes in the area. If you look over toward Baton Rouge though, the wind gusts stayed below hurricane strength in Baton Rouge. So Baton Rouge just escaped Ida's wrath as the storm jogged a little bit to the right at landfall and that spared Baton Rouge, but that put New Orleans into the stronger winds as it moved across the area. We had Hurricane Larry, long-lived storm, a very slow-moving storm as well out here east of the Caribbean Sea. That's why it generated a good deal of ace points before reaching Newfoundland as a hurricane in about the 10th or 11th of September. Nicholas was a short-lived, weak hurricane. It briefly was a hurricane right about at landfall as it moved inland just to the west of Freeport, just east of Matagorda Bay. It had a couple of surprises along its track. First of all, we can look down here near Brownsville. That's the center. It looked like it was going to impact Brownsville, but then it stalled and jogged to the right. And watch it do the same thing as it moved almost inland into Matagorda Bay. There's the center right here. And then it jogged to the right and moved right over Freeport area for the strongest winds. And that produced some uh, significant wind damage for the power grid across the Houston area. Not long lasting damage, but uh, some areas were without power for a couple of days as we had tropical storm force wind gusts throughout the Houston Galveston area and down to Freeport, some gusts near hurricane force down in that area. We had Hurricane Sam, one of these long lasting open ocean storms. Fortunately, these points are six hours apart and you can see that Sam was moving very slowly as it moved off to the uh, east of the Caribbean Sea, and these orange points indicate it was a Category 3 or greater hurricane in that time. That's why it generated 58 ace points all by itself. The average for the entire season, for an entire season over the past 30 years, is about 119, 120 ace points. So quite a bit of uh, ace points generated from Sam. Fortunately, it didn't affect any land areas at all. Now that's a look at all the significant storms of the season. We made it all the way through the list uh, down to Wanda, Teresa, Victor, and Wanda, generally short-lived and well out to sea, didn't affect anyone but shipping out across the Atlantic Basin. And it looks like we're not going to have any more named storms this year. And we can still have something in the subtropics that could be generated, uh, could be classified as a subtropical storm over the coming weeks and even into December. If that was the case, the Hurricane Center would use the supplemental list and the next name on the list would be Adrian. Well, that's a look at the 2021 hurricane season. I'm storm geometeorologist Chris Abair. Thanks for viewing.